So today's video is once again an extremely detailed video and I will be demonstrating how I lit and shot this image using just one tiny speed light. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just lighting in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see some of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And for you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a very small shooting area. This area here is only 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. And we will try our best today to do all our demonstrations within this small space so that you can replicate this in your home. So as I said in my intro, this will be an extremely detailed video. But if you want to skip to the shooting part, feel free to do that just by fast forwarding the video. But for you guys who want to see the actual setup process, well, I hope you enjoy this video. So as I said, we're going to stay within this shooting area. And the first thing that I want to put together is my backdrop. So I have here a light stand. And this light stand, as I've said in previous videos also, is special because I can put the spigot on the side like this. And I have mounted this one. This is a Manfrotto adjusting clamp, which serves as my backdrop holder so that I can basically just clamp my backdrop here. Now, the backdrop that I will be using is this one. This is a collapsible backdrop from Kate Backdrop. I love these backdrops because they're very easy to use. They're small. It's easy for me to bring around. And it's printed on non-reflective fabric. So it's very nice in terms of creating that beautiful background for your portrait. So I think I will be using this side. So you can see the clip here. All I have to do is lift it up and I can clip the background to it and put it to the desired height like so. And I'm gonna put it right at the edge of this shooting area. Now, if you have a smaller home studio or if you have a small home studio like this and you don't want to really um, waste some space with light sand, you could always just mount this on the wall using gaffer tape. All right, so let me see. Let's put it here and twist it forward. There we go. Okay. So that's going to be my backdrop, right? So what light am I going to be using? Well, the light that I'm going to be using is my Sony F60RM, which is this one. This is a portable flash unit that's battery operated. You don't necessarily have to use the same brand. You could use any flash that's at your disposal. However, I like using this small light, especially for small home studios like this. Now this light stand, I am actually going to mount this Sony F60RM on this one. This is the MagMod Mag Shoe. This Mag Shoe you could see here has a cold shoe. And all I have to do is mount this part here of my flash on the cold shoe like that. Lock it in place, lock it in place, and mount it on my light stand like so. Now one of the reasons on why I like this, this MagMod Mag Shoe is that when I press this button right here, it allows me to tilt my light forward or backwards depending on how the angle of my light will be. Now this MagMod Mag Shoe also serves as an umbrella reflector, but before I show you that, I think this is a perfect opportunity to thank my friends from Urban Pros Manila. Urban Pros Manila is the exclusive distributor of MagMod products in the Philippines. So if you are based here and would want the best deals possible, feel free to check out the links that I will put in the description, plus some very special discount codes. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the modifier that I will be using. I basically have here a 120cm shoot-through umbrella from Photix. Now, normally people stay away from shoot-through umbrellas. I don't know why, because this is really one of my favorite modifiers. So a shoot-through umbrella is so easy to set up. All you have to do is open it up, like an umbrella. That's how easy it is. And you could see this hole right here. Let me show you this hole in front of the MagMod MagShoe right there. All you have to do 
is slide the rod here and that becomes your umbrella holder. Okay, but one thing I forgot to mention is that whenever you're using speed lights like this, it's very important that you actually bring out this diffuser here in front because what this one does is that it spreads the light. And for you to be able to maximize a modifier like this, you'd want to spread the light as evenly as possible so that you get the biggest possible light. So you have your light this way. And now a lot of people have been asking me this question. How do you mount your umbrella or until where do you put your umbrella in? You could easily put it all the way in like that from the side. You could see it's inside the umbrella. If you do that, then definitely you're not going to maximize the size of the umbrella. My general rule of thumb is where the umbrella ends is where your flash should actually begin, which is about right there. Okay. Now, Another very important thing to consider is how the feet of your light stands are set. You notice how it's set right here. If I actually push the umbrella forward, look at how unstable that is. So it's very important that you actually have one foot facing more or less a direction of where your umbrella is facing. By doing that, look, it becomes more stable. Okay, so that's the modifier we're going to be using today. So now let's talk about the camera that I will be using in all the in-camera settings. So the camera that I'm using is my Sony A7R Mark IV in the 50mm 1.2 GM lens. However, you could use any camera again in any lens you want. However, I chose a 50mm for a specific purpose because I feel my 50mm is my perfect half-body portrait lens. And 1.2, maybe I won't even shoot at 1.2 now because I want to remove all my existing ambient light. By the way, my flash right there is controlled using this one. This is my Sony WRC-1M Remote Commander. What this basically does is that it allows my camera to talk to my flash wirelessly so that I can remotely trigger the flash there without any connection. And at the same time, could change the power settings of my flash using my camera's in-body menu system. Now, of course, because you use the most basic of flash units that just triggers the flash, again, use whatever it is that's at your disposal. So my settings, my settings right now are 1 over 250 f 2.2 ISO 100. Why is that? Take a look at this. When I turn off my flash trigger, it will disable or enable live view. In other words, you are actually seeing whatever exposure I am getting now. But to properly demonstrate this, I think it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Thank you again for doing this. Again, beautiful, beautiful. So you could see right now, even if I'm one at 1 over 250, which is my flash sync speed at f2.2 ISO 100, we can still see a bit of Coco. So what we'll do is we'll probably stop down now because we can't really bring our aperture, or sorry, we can't really bring our ISO lower, and our shutter speed is at 1 over 250, which is basically the maximum of my flashing speed. However, this particular trigger and flash does have a special feature. It is called high-speed sync. With high-speed sync, I am now able to go beyond my flash sync speed in case I want to shoot wide open. I said earlier I might not shoot at 1.2, but I think I might want to because this background right here actually begs to be blurred out to give that really nice, well, painterly feel, right? So let's try it. Let's go at 1.2. Okay. Or sorry, I'm using, I'm sorry. I'm actually using my 85 millimeter 1.4 lens. I, I thought I was using a 50, but I forgot that Coco requested that she wanted a tighter headshot, right, babe? So we decided to change our lens to an 85 millimeter because the 85 millimeter is actually the perfect portrait lens. So I'm shooting now with a 1.4 and you see there's still, there's still a lot of light in her face. Oh, by the way, let's turn this one on so that it won't be difficult for Coco. Is it on now? There we go. Thank you very much for this monitor because this one allows Coco to see herself while I am shooting. So it's at 1.4 and I can still see a lot of the light, which I don't want right now because I want all the light coming from my flash. 
Now, of course, you could easily do this by just turning off all the video light, but then you won't be able to see anything that I'm doing. So it's best that I just go on high speed sync. So what I'll do is I'll turn on my high speed sync right there. So when I turn on high speed sync, it will automatically allow me to go beyond my flash sync speed. Maybe right now at 1 over 1000 f1.4 is okay. Slight light going there is only because of my Atomos, which is a bit bright. But in reality, this is already almost pitch black. So right now, 1.4, 1 over 1000, let's take one test shot. So it's very, very weak because of the fact that I'm shooting on high speed sync. So I might have to go at full power. Oops, what did I do there? I'll probably have to go at full power and see where this takes us. There we go, full power, 1 over 1000 f1.4 ISO 100. Now, this light here is position. Let me see. You know what? This is a small home studio and I actually want to show you how everything is in relation because in relation to each other because we can't really see it in video. So the best way to do it is I'll bring out my trusty measuring tape again. Okay, so here. So let us measure how far the background is away from Coco. Let's measure it from here. The background is about 20 inches away from Coco. This light right now at center is about 24 inches away from Coco. The height of the center of the light is about 66 inches. And Coco's distance from the lens is, sorry, you can see my back, 57 inches, give or take. My camera height is at 56 inches to 57 inches. So basically, that's how it is. This is a small home studio. And you can note, you notice I'm not even maximizing everything. Though my stand is somewhat away from outside the line that I set, but only by a foot. So it's always easier for us to just move everything there if I want to. Now, you may say that I don't have any walls here reflecting light back, but you know, there's a quick solution to that. All you have to do is really paint all your walls black if their space is really this big. But if you want to control the spill of the light, you could always just put flags there. But let's take a few more shots, babe, please. Very nice. Can you move one tiny step back? Look at how painterly that background looks with a 1.4 lens, right? And there we go. Beautiful. We don't even need the uh, reflector because I brought in my existing ambient light. However, in case that I don't want my existing ambient light there, all I have to do, again, is cover the light so that the light is really just coming from here. So let's take one more shot. There. The problem is with light this close is that it becomes a bit flat, right? Remember, whenever you're shooting, especially portraits, you actually want highlights and shadows because by having highlights and shadows, you're creating depth. So let's take a few more shots. And it is so simple. It's just one speed light, one umbrella, which is very inexpensive in a small space. And we're able to do this. How about opening up your body a bit, babe? Oh, by the way, my white balance is set at 5600 Kelvin because this is rated at 5600 Kelvin. However, if I want it warmer, all I need to do is shift my white balance to, let's say, 6,500 Kelvin or 6,600, no, let's go 65. Okay, let's go 6,500 Kelvin. Babe moves slightly here because I can see from the live view that it actually looks better, um, warmer. So the background really stands out more warmer. And there we go. Let's push it a bit more. Instead of 6,500 Kelvin, let's make it about 8,000 Kelvin. There, beautiful. I love it. And that's how easy it is to take beautiful portraits using just one light in a small home studio. So if you have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, and also like this video. So if you want to see more of my images too, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.